so here you can see e2 e3 is there okay right so this is my dictionary see this is my dictionary now why to use dictionary guys anyone why we are using dictionary anyone guys why we are using dictionary yes to store the information but the main purpose of dictionary is to create the data frame you can be able to create the data frame right okay let's say right so this is how you can uh, sorry that's the thing a2 is not defined so that's why i got the error i just wanted to use a1 instead of a2 now here you can see that this is my dictionary now one more thing you can be able to you know update the values okay let's say i just wanted to update the value okay update the age let's say okay so is it possible to update the age yes is it possible right i just wanted to update the age from 25 to let's say now 26 okay so here you can see i'm able to update the age so in the simple way you can be able to update any feature right and if you wanted to add the few more features in it okay a few more keys in it like this is nothing but the one key this is another key this is the third key in the same way if you wanted to add the new key over here so i can simply okay use the new new key let's say address okay and i'll let's say addresses delhi india right so this is how i can add, add the address right see so which means that you can be able to update the tuple okay in the same way if you wanted to you know delete the particular element or particular key with their value okay so you can be able to do that how you can be able to just use this particular term okay whatever key you want to delete let's say i just wanted to delete the name because for because for the purpose of confidentiality okay so i just wanted to hide the identity so i can use this i can simply use the del okay and i can simply enter it okay now see here you can go okay now in my data there is no name okay we only have age bike address okay so we just hide the person's identity right now if i wanted to delete the whole dictionary so i can simply use this okay and now let me check yes we just deleted the dictionary that's why there is no dictionary found with the name a1 because see we just deleted it right understood guys this is all about the dictionary right if you wanted to explore this all the thing okay so you can simply explore this thing by using the internet okay and if you if you have any questions related to this you can simply connect with me on linkedin okay we'll definitely okay solve that particular query of yours so now guys this is about the you know list tuple and dictionary okay now let's go ahead with the data frame data frame how you can create the data frame okay using pandas library so 
as we know guys for okay using pandas you will have to import the pandas first okay and how you can import the pandas like each and every time okay this is the word i don't want to use it so instead of that i'll just add the you know pd instead of this this is uh, also known as allies okay in sql also you saw this okay if you wanted to sh okay shorten your name so you can simply use this so we are using import pandas as pd okay and you can simply use this now second thing is that okay now okay there are multiple ways okay like if you have the data already in your system so you can simply use your data and you can simply you know enter your data by using the or read your data by using the read underscore csv i'll show you that as well how you can read your data in uh, excel format csv format as well right now here if you wanted to you know create a data frame by using pandas library so let me show you how you can create the data frame let's say i just wanted to create a data so for that i'll be using the pandas library c instead of pandas now i'll be using pd okay so remember pd is nothing but the pandas library we are using okay i just wanted to create a data frame so this is the one method with the help of that we can be able to create a data frame okay now inside the data frame okay you will have to add some values as well as the names for those values which are nothing but the column names okay so for that i'll be creating the dictionary inside the data frame okay let's say i just wanted to you know uh, create the dictionary of name okay and the age okay so i'll take the few persons name from our you know from our list of attendees and here you can see for that okay now you can see that i just created the one column name okay now i just wanted to take a list of multiple students so for that i'll have to create the list over here okay let me enter the few name okay let's take shira okay now this is the first column we just created understood now i just wanted to create the next column so i can do this by adding the indentation over here like i just complete this and i'll go with this okay and i'll add the one more column name over here which is nothing but the age okay and let me now you know as uh, i took the you know the names of the attendees so i'll randomly you know put the age instead of taking the age from the attendees so let's select the age like 24 26 23 22 okay so as we know there are four names so i'll have to add the four ages as well right and let me enter it okay now this cell is executed now if i wanted to see the data now you can simply use the data okay here you can be able to see this is my data okay with the name and age i just created a small data set which is totally random okay you can also create the data set like this okay by using the pandas library okay now okay what i just wanted to do is i just wanted to find out the descriptive statistics okay i just wanted to find out the descriptive statistics of this so what can i do i can simply use the one method which is there in the python which is the inbuilt method of pandas so i can simply use the data name okay and i can simply use the describe method 
okay i can simply use the describe method and here in the describe methods you can be able to see the descriptive statistics understood so in pandas it is very easy to find out the descriptive statistics of your data right by using a describe method right so first thing is that you can see the data this is my data okay now this is nothing but the you know descriptive statistics of your data this is the count okay this is you can see that the number of the you know the values are there total count of the data right the mean of your age because age is the only numerical variable that's why in the descriptive statistics we got the one columns description okay only age we got the count of the age we got the mean of the age which is nothing but the 23.75 right we got the standard deviation of the age standard deviation is standard deviation is nothing but the variability or the variance in between the ages understood then what about the minimum value minimum value of the or minimum age is nothing but the 22 okay maximum age is nothing but the 26 right you can see that the median age is nothing but the 23.5 okay then the this these are nothing but the quartiles okay first quartile second quartile third quartile okay so first quartile is nothing but the okay let's say you have the data from 1 to 100 okay so okay then in the first quartile you will find out the data from 1 to 25 okay or the 25 first 25 percent of observations which is nothing but the you know which is inside the first quartile so at the 25th percent observation is going to be your first quartile so which is this 22.75 okay so if i took the example from 1 to 100 so my first quartile means the 25th percent of my observation is nothing but the 25 then the 50 percent of the observation is nothing but the 50 75 75th percent of observation is going to be 75 right so here in the same way you can see that the 25th percent of the observation over here then the 50 percent of the observation over here and the 75th percent of the observation over here okay so let me repeat this by using a whiteboard so you can be able to understand this okay give me a minute so i'll able to i can show you in the whiteboard okay okay now it is clear now guys okay let's take an example okay let me take an example okay let's say i have a data from one to you know one to hundred values are there okay so on the line okay you will find that okay uh, there is one okay and there is hundred right so meanwhile a uh, in between okay in the middle you will find that the 50 is there here you will find that the 25 is there here you will find that the 75 is there isn't it okay so this is my q1 q1 is nothing but the 25 percent observation this is going to be the 50 percent okay this is going to be the 75 percent okay so here you will see that the 25 percent 50 percent and 75 percent so these are the values of these okay you will find that from here from at the starting okay you will find that the okay first 25 percent of observation okay if you sort the data let's say my this one to 100 data is unsort data you will find that the totally random data 75 72 62 okay like okay you will find that the one two like this up to you know 30 so you will find that in that we have the total data is from one two hundred okay you sort this data you just put it on the line and you will find that the 25th percent of data is going to be 25 50 percent of data is 50 75 percent of data is 75 so in the same way you, here you can see that this is the 25th percent of the data 
inside okay for this particular for these four values okay that's why 22.75 value is there right okay what about middle value middle most value is nothing but the 23.5 okay then what about the 75 percent observation so 24.5 value is there maximum value is 26 minimum value is 22 understood okay this is nothing but the descriptive statistics okay now okay you can check this okay for understanding your data understanding your data like there is another thing is that let me show you that one okay if you are using the info method is there any missing value in your data or not how so here you can see that the total entries in your data is nothing but the four right there are four values are there in the count as well you can see the four values okay in the okay you just count it you can see that the four names are there four ages are there right so here you can see that the four entries are there or simply the four rows are there in your data right so how many columns are there only two columns are there name and age so here in the name column you will find that the four non-null values are there okay if there is a missing value inside these inside let's say this is the missing value let's assume that so you will find that there will be three non-null value instead of four right so if four non-null values are there which means that there is no missing value in the data okay we'll okay see this thing okay when we are dealing with the large data set, then you will understand right now this is about the info method you can use the info method to find out the null values in your data as well as the data types now you can see that in the data type you will find that the integer data type is there as well as the object data type now what is object data type okay as we know name are nothing but the strings okay these are nothing but the string data file, uh, type right names are nothing but the string data types so these are nothing but the string value but in the data frame the data type is nothing but the object so object and string are same okay there is no you know difference between the string and object okay now let us go ahead okay and understand the further part okay so now I just wanted to let's say I just wanted to you know arrange this or these uh, sort this data you know in the ascending order okay by using this age okay because we know that okay this is nothing but the object okay and this is the number so number is more suitable to arrange right so we can arrange the data in the ascending order by using this particular age okay how can our data so if your table table is very large right so that table must be stored in somewhere else right the in the sql format in the you know or in the excel format or in the csv format right so you can read that data in the python okay you don't have to enter all the data or the table okay by using this okay now let's go ahead and then sort the values okay sort this particular data by using the age okay now as we know this is my data data dot sort value now this is the one method we are using sort values now by which column okay by using which column i just wanted to sort this value by okay this column which one age column right and I'll be using the ascending equal to true, which means that okay, sort this data in the ascending order, right? Now there is one more instead, you know, interesting parameter is there, okay? Like the the parameter name is nothing but the in place, okay? The parameter name is nothing but the in place. Let me just add the in place parameter and i'll explain the 
you know the purpose behind this why i just added this okay let me run this and here you can see now i just sorted the data by using this column each see 22 23 24 26 right if you go ahead and ascending equal to false so you will see that you just you just arrange the data into the descending order right that's the difference now what about in place parameter okay why i use the in place parameter so here you can see i just use the data sort values okay these all the things with in place equal to false okay so which means that i didn't change this particular my original data okay i created the data okay just to show okay how to you know sort the values okay if you wanted to do the changes in your original data like this okay okay then you can use the in place equal to true okay let me show you okay this is my original data which one this is my original data 24 26 23 and 22 right here you can see okay this is my you know changed data sorted data okay let me show you the my data okay now you can see the difference between this is my original data and this is my sorted data okay this is just because of this in place parameter if i use this parameter as the true which means that i am making changes in my original data okay let me go and run this here you can see okay now i just made changes in my original data now i can simply see my data and here you can see now the data is nothing but the 22 23 24 26 i just sorted the data in the ascending order so that's the you know importance of in place parameter in the you know uh, the sort method okay right okay this is my data let me okay for that i'll have to again okay read the data so that's why i'm reading the data okay let me just run this okay this is my original data and now let's go over here and let me show you my original data this is my original data isn't this understood okay this is my original data okay i got the data from here okay this is my original data 24 26 okay or otherwise simple words again simply move this particular code over here so you can understand okay this is my original data guys okay this is my original data and this is my the sorted data that i'll just sort this data okay let me go and sort this data into the ascending order by using the age column right and i'm using the in place equal to false means do not make changes in my original data just i just wanted to see okay whether it is working or not so for that reason i i'll be using in place equal to false so let's go and run this now here you can see i made changes in my original data i sorted the data into the ascending order but here you can see this is my original data okay let me create the one new cell over here and i'll show you over here okay here you can see now here you can see this is my original data this is my change data here also you can see this is the original this is the original these two are the original one middle one is sorted data okay right now if you wanted to make changes in your original data this data or this data so you can simply use in place equal to fall uh, true right so if you use this so you can see that now the data is going to be the sorted one and you can be able to see now if you run this data so you can find that now this data is also sorted one understood so that's the power of in place if you use the true then you will be able to make the changes in your original data that you created over here okay if you don't want to make changes in the original data you can see use in place equal to false okay and simply go with the further analysis without making changes in your original data right so for that reason you will have to you know create one more name for your data over here like this okay uh, data one okay so if you are not 
comfortable with making changes in your original data you can simply do this thing okay you can create the new data like if you want to make the changes if, if you are pre-processing your data let's say you are cleaning your data you just making changes lot of changes in your data like you just find out missing values outlier you replace those you just draw a few rows okay you just you know clean your data in short okay now why you want to do undo okay why you want to go with your original data original data is messy data you just clean your data and now your data is ready for further analysis right so there is no you know concept for doing undo okay for here now okay let me okay this is my data right so here what i can do is i can copy this cell okay i can paste it over here okay and let's say this is again my let's say tf my data frame okay and i'll make the duplicates right i'll simply make the duplicates okay so what i can do is i'll simply making the duplicates okay let's run this and this is my data okay 